landed. Oi, old man, what are you doing here? I thought I told you to stay behind and protect Tempest. I asked angrily since I thought my instructions were pretty clear. However, I'm more so concerned that he can just show up at my location unannounced like that. Rimuru, how could you leave me hanging like that? He said while wiping away fake tears. What are you talking about? I asked him confusedly, not knowing what the hell he was on about. He then popped up in my face while holding a manga book. This? Where's the next volume? Rimuru, in the name of the mighty storm dragon, I demand you give it to me now, he ordered loudly. Oh, so that's what this is about, and here I thought he came here because he sensed that I was in danger. I'll give you the next volume but do me a favor first, I replied. I might as well take advantage of his surprise arrival and have him distract Milam while I go deal with the others. Hum? He muttered curiously. Could you keep Milam occupied for a moment? I asked politely while pointing at Milam behind him who appeared just as shocked at Veldora's sudden appearance as everyone else in the room. Milam? Oh! My eldest brother's only child. This is my first time meeting her, but she hasn't grown up much at all. Very well, leave her to me. He said reassuringly. Interesting, so apparently Milam is Veldora's niece. I'll have to ask him more about that later. I didn't even know he had siblings. Oh by the way. Milam is being controlled by Clayman right now, so don't go too hard on her. I whispered to him before storming off. He was about to say something but I left quickly before hearing him out. Now that Milam was being occupied by Veldora, I could move freely and deal with Clayman and his subordinates. Phew, although his surprise appearance was not something I wanted to happen, it turned out to be a blessing in the end. Thank you, sworn brother. Velzard's Pav I'm currently in my room just relaxing and lying down on my bed while reading one of the many books Rain had gotten me from her many ventures into different human nations. Sigh, there isn't much to do around here. I wonder if I should have agreed to go to that demon lord meeting with Guy. Then again, the last time I went there, they just talked about an interesting topics while trying to come up with a name for their little club. Suddenly, I felt a massive spike of magicules coming from the dimension where the meeting was taking place. After examining the magicule signature a little more, I confirmed that it could only come from one person. A smile slowly crept up on my face as I got up from my bed. Foo foo foo, long time no see, little brother. It seems like he's gotten better at controlling his aura, to the point where even I had a bit of trouble recognizing it. I suppose spending 300 years inside the unlimited imprisonment has given him plenty of time to improve his overall abilities. Perhaps he even managed to reflect upon his actions during his time being sealed. I guess I'll pay them a visit and see what's going on there. Using space time domination, I teleported inside the room right next to where Guy was sitting. I shifted my attention to the center and saw an ongoing inside of a barrier, which I assume Guy put up to contain the fight. Since I was concealing my aura, none of the other demon lords or their attendants have noticed me. Oh, what a surprise. I thought you weren't interested in attending Walpurgis. Guy remarked nonchalantly but was a bit surprised by my sudden appearance next to him. Era, I just happened to feel my little brother's presence so I thought I'd show up. Is that a problem, Guy? I asked him coldly with a smile that didn't reach my eyes. And not at all. Anyway, it seems your little brother is playing with Milam over there. He answered nervously but quickly brushed it aside. Foo foo foo, he's super fun to scare. It's become one of my favorite things to do whenever I get really bored. I can see that, I suppose I'll just watch for now and see how this all concludes. Nodding at my response, his attention goes back to the ongoing battle. As Veldora and Milam engaged in their friendly spar, I immediately noticed a massive difference in his way of fighting compared to before. Instead of relying on brute force and his high magicule capacity, he was using proper techniques coupled with his immense strength. To say that I'm impressed with his growth would be an understatement. In his current state, I'm sure he could give Belgrind a run for her money, maybe even defeat her if he's serious enough. Say, don't you think that Veldora has improved a lot since last time? I asked Guy to see if he also noticed my Veldora's change in fighting capabilities. But knowing him, he most likely already did. Indeed, he's gotten surprisingly good. I'm not even sure if we can defeat him as effortlessly as we did before. He praised earnestly, reaffirming my observation. Foo foo foo, I have to agree with you on that. I wonder if he can move the suspended world, I wondered curiously. My little sister, Velgrind, 
although as strong as she is, is unable to move when time is stopped. This makes me curious if Veldora can do so. Because if he can, then it would definitely put him a step above her. Ha ha ha. Would you like to test it out? Guy asked half jokingly, which I certainly didn't expect. I guess he also wanted to test out Veldora's current capabilities. If you're all right with it then I will. I replied smugly as a sinister grin began forming on my face. Go ahead. He affirmed gladly. Having received his approval, not that I needed it anyway, I activated, time stop, using, space time domination, from my ultimate skill, Lord of Patience. Gabriel. The world immediately lost all its color as time ground to a halt. Everyone in the room became motionless and the raging battle inside the barrier ceased. As far as I know, only Guy, De Gruel, and I, can move in the, suspended world. Now then, show me what you're capable of, little brother. What the? Guy, did you just activate, time stop, the giant, De Gruel, asked in surprise after sensing that time had stopped. Being one of the only three capable of moving right now, he got up from his seat and made his way towards us. Fufufu, how rude, he still hasn't noticed my presence. But I guess it is to be expected considering I was concealing my aura quite well. Nah, but you should really work on your perception some more. Guy answered with a smirk on his face as his eyes slowly turned to me. Following his gaze, de Gruel's eyes met mine and a look of confusion could be seen on his face. Pardon me, but who are you? I wasn't aware of another individual who was capable of stopping time? He asked while scratching the back of his head. Era, I suppose I should introduce myself. My name is Velzard, the White Ice Dragon. It's a pleasure to meet you de Gruel San. I introduced myself gracefully and ended with a light elegant bow. I also release a bit of my, dragon spirit hockey, at the same time. Seeing this, his face immediately turns to one of shock as he proceeds to bow deeply. V. Velzard Sama. It's an H honor to meet you, forgive my impudence, I wasn't able to detect your presence earlier. He said nervously while maintaining a respectful bow. Fufufu, it's always fun scaring people with my aura. Guy just sighed and shook his head in response to my antic. Come on, Velzard, you really had to scare him like that? He asked in a somewhat disappointed tone. Fufufu, I was just having a bit of fun, don't worry about such trivial matters, and you don't need to be so formal with me de Gruel San. I said with a light smile, which calmed him. If I may ask, why did you activate, time stop, Velzard Sama? de Gruel asked curiously. Because we're about to see something interesting, I replied while pointing at the frozen Veldora inside the barrier. Veldora San. Now that you've mentioned it, his fighting capabilities have drastically improved since the last time I fought with him. So you're saying that he might be able to move in, suspended world? He asked to which I confirmed by nodding. It's only a theory, but it doesn't hurt to test it out, Guy said as he shrugged, still keenly observing the frozen Veldora inside the barrier. I see. I never actually used, time stop, during our many spars so it'll be interesting to see if he can move. De Gruel said earnestly while paying close attention to Veldora. The three of us stood there, eagerly awaiting for Veldora to move. We were certain that he was now at the very least, perceiving the, suspended world. After a little bit of waiting, Veldora began to move. Incredible. You've truly grown up, little brother. That bastard actually managed to move. I'm impressed. That officially puts Veldora above Velgrind at least for the time being. Guy exclaimed excitedly as he praised my little brother's growth. What he said is true, being able to move in the suspended world puts him above my little sister. Kuahahahaha. I'm not sure what just happened, but I just did something totally cool, Veldora declared proudly. Fufufu, seeing Veldora all excited like this is adorable. He began scanning the room and his eyes eventually met mine. With a horrified look on his face, he took a step back. Velzard nay, W what B brings you here? He asked nervously while still having a look of fear on his face. Sigh, I'm not surprised that he's afraid of me, but it does hurt a little. Era, don't mind me Veldora Kuhn. I'm just here to watch. I replied while giving him a genuine smile. My response seemed to put him at ease. His fear of me aside, I am truly proud of Veldora's growth. He's a bit more mature, less impulsive, and most importantly, he's become a truly formidable force. However, Veldora will always be Veldora, so he will always be the same at the core, not that I dislike it. 
I see. So I guess this is the suspended world you always talked about before, he said as he started observing his surroundings and was dumbfounded seeing everyone in the room motionless. His reaction is to be expected since this is his first time entering the world of stopped time. It is, and I'm incredibly proud of you for being able to move in it, something even Velgrind can't do at the moment. Do you currently possess an ultimate skill? I asked curiously since I was sure that he also possessed one. Immediately, his eyes lit up and a wide grin formed on his face. Kuahahahahaha, of course, I do. I possess the ultimate skill, Lord of Investigation, Faust, he announced with confidence as his booming voice shook the entire room. Interesting. So you wield an ultimate skill as well. I guess that's to be expected of someone who can move in the suspended world. Guy chimed in since he's always been someone who held ultimate skill wielders in high regard. Foo foo foo. I should probably lift the time stop and let your playtime with Milam resume. I uttered casually. Since my original question was answered, I was ready to let time resume once again. Wait a moment. Belzard Ney. Could you hold it for just a little bit more? I feel we're about to witness something even more interesting. Kuhahahahaha. <laughs> Veldora requested politely, much to my surprise. Something more interesting, huh? I'm not sure what he has planned, but I guess I can continue holding it. Era, what do you have planned, Veldora Kuhn? I questioned curiously. I'm not the only one who's gonna be able to move in the suspended world, he replied before turning around and pointing at a Majin with platinum blue hair. So Veldora thinks that person can also move as well. Foo foo foo, I don't regret coming here at all. This day is just full of surprises. For real? I knew he was quite capable, but for you to say that he can move in, time stop, is surprising. I guess this Rimuru person is a lot more interesting than I thought. Guy remarked in surprise at Veldora's declaration. He then held his chin, now intently observing the person named Rimuru. Ha ha ha, it seems like being able to move in stopped time won't be so special in the future then. De Gruel said jokingly, making Guy and Veldora chuckle slightly. The four of us now waited in suspense as we could see Rimuru beginning to perceive the suspended world. His ability to adapt is frightening considering he's only a demon lord. It won't be long before he gains the ability to move. And I was spot on, as not even a minute later, Rimuru began to move. Incredible. So Veldora's assumption was right. Just who is that person? My little brother then flew off to Rimuru and slapped him in the back. Sigh. Where are your manners, Veldora? Kuahahahahaha. I knew you could do it, Rimuru, as expected of my sworn brother, he exclaimed proudly. It looks like Veldora and Rimuru quite are close since I never would have expected Veldora to call someone his sworn brother. Ow. What was that for, old man? Rimuru asked angrily, quite annoyed at my little brother's action. Sigh. I can relate to you, Rimuru. Kuahahahahaha. Something unexpected just happened. But hey, we can now move in stop time. Thank you, Velzard Ney. He shouted gratefully after turning in my direction. I simply smiled and nodded at him in response. You have a sister. Rimuru turned his gaze to where Veldora was facing and our eyes met. I quickly teleport to the other side of the room, just at the edge of the barrier near where Veldora and Rimuru were in order to surprise the new demon lord. Era, you sure are an interesting person. I certainly wasn't expecting you to be able to move in stopped time. I praised honestly. Ah. Uh, when do you get there? Geez, you're really out here scaring new people, huh? At least introduce yourself first, you know? Rimuru said as he took a few steps away from the barrier's edge and regained his composure. Foo foo foo, his reaction was quite cute. I suppose I should. My name is Velzard, the White Ice Dragon, and I am the eldest sibling among the three living true dragons. Nice to meet you, Demon Lord Rimuru.